Okay, hi, I'm Paul Kane. I'm Strategy Director at Flex Enable, and I'll just uh, explain a couple of what we're showing here, a couple of these demos. These first are ambient dimming films um, that are used for AR headsets. So um, I think it's uh, well known that in augmented reality headsets, see-through augmented reality headsets, uh, when you use them in high brightness conditions or high luminance conditions, it's very hard to see the virtual object uh, against a very bright background. And so what's needed is tintable films that can reduce the luminance of the real world to ensure that you have high contrast of the virtual objects. So it's just a switch, you can on and off, yeah, or how does it work? They go, they, so these are used guest host liquid crystals. Um, so there's no polarizers in here and they can be uh, actually continuously driven between the, the darkest and the lightest state. Um, the, what I'm showing here is just turning them on and off to show the, the dynamic range, but they could be uh, driven at intermediate states as well. Um, this one switches from about 1% to 35%, and the other one here switches from 20% to 70%, and you can tune the dynamic range depending on the design. And the reason these are needed, if I can just point to the picture at the back behind me, is that when you show virtual objects, for example, um, here in the terms of the black wings of the bird, you can't project black from a light engine in AR. So if you want to show black, you need to produce black or produce a dark enough surface that represents black, and that's what's needed for... Can you do it in an active dimming. matrix kind of way? And Yeah, because we have an organic transistor, we can do this in active matrix way as well, and that's ultimately what's needed for what's called... You know, so you can just do it just on the wings? Yeah, just behind the wings and just, just do a, a, a dark region behind the dark areas, exactly. So there's kind of global dimming is what we're showing here, but ultimately pixelated dimming is what's what's needed in the end for uh, see-through AR. If, when you have AR, you also want to have uh, good transparency, yeah. high transparency yeah. to see the world yeah, and not dim it out. That's right. So you get to 70. Yeah, so this, can go, this one's going to 70, but it could go to 80 um, with a different cell gap, so you can adjust it and go higher than that. So you can, they're basically, an, by adjusting the amount of liquid crystalline dye in there, you can adjust the dynamic range accordingly. Is this unique? Nobody else does it that good? Well, ultimately, no one can, what no one can do, because this is on plastic, this is the key point, this is made on plastic film, so these are extremely thin and light. They don't really add any weight or thickness to a headset, and if you want headsets that are all-day wearable and comfortable, then you need this technology. And what no one can do is the pixelated dimming on plastic. That's a unique they do on glass, poss the other possibility ones? with our technology. Basically, all, displays, all LCD displays are a form of glass-based dimmer. If, if you like, albeit with a different architecture, but to Could do the things. whole optics, the whole system of, of the AR glass be plastics? Well, this is, this is our, but one component, and of course there are other components in the, in the light engine. I can't speak for all of those, uh, but many of the components the could be guide? plastic. It, yes, absolutely, yeah, that's be. not something we're focused on, but, but it can be, yes, yeah. Right. And then secondly, this is a tunable lens, so I'll just pick it up to show that. So this again is a plastic film, it's about 100 microns thick, and this is actually a, a, a lens that can be switched on and off um, in lens power. Sorry, I keep rotating it there. Um, so this uses liquid crystal, and by applying a voltage to the liquid crystal, we can rotate it and change its refractive index, and that changes the power of the lens. This particular lens is a one diopter lens. That means it can take light that was added from infinity and focus it to a point of one meter, for example. And so here I have a demo that shows that lens in action. And that, so one of those lenses is mounted here in this, in this thin black holder. I don't know if you can just see that. And behind it, we have a, a camera which is looking through that lens and it's looking at this test image on, the, on, the, on your left. And, and then the output of the image is shown on this display. So at the moment, everything's in focus uh, because the system's set up so. But if I move the, the object towards the camera, then you'll see the image becomes larger, obviously, but also becomes blurred. It's now out of focus. And so what I can do is apply a voltage to this ultra-thin plastic lens um, by pushing this 1D button, and it will bring the image back into focus um, at this distance. So that's a one diopter lens. And the reason that's needed in AR and VR is to allow virtual objects to, be, to change their focal length. So at the moment, many systems will have fixed focal length of maybe two meters. Um, but by being able to change the power of the lens, we can really essentially overcome the vergence accommodation conflict, so-called, where we can make sure that the uh, virtual object is in focus at any distance, whether it be an infinity or closer to, the, closer to your face, basically. 
maybe with the AI vision, uh, smart vision and everything, it might be able to know how far something is and, yeah. and focus it exactly at that distance. Precisely. And it needs, so this really works in conjunction with eye tracking and other technologies and together make a system that allows you to continuously adjust where How good is the focus. optics and the and the and the the focus compared to a glass based lens. Yeah, so this has this has a good MTF in uh, this particular lens and this is a one diopter lens power. So that lens power is less than you might have in say vision correction. So if you had glasses, you might have a few diopters in in terms of your ability to, you know, overcome short sightedness. It might it might be a few diopters even five or six. Um, so this is really uh, more like one diopter and is aimed at correcting vergence accommodation conflict rather than, say, vision correction. Can you combine multiple? Uh, you can combine them together. So you could stack two together and have two diopter lens. So then you'd have two layers put together. So yes, you can. But the, the frame that goes around is uh, not flexible. No. So no. you need to have something s strong that plays with the flexible lens. Yeah. So. It, for this system, we've mounted it in a, in a holder just to give a kind of rugged demo, but ultimately this would be, because it's so thin and it can also be biaxially curved, you would laminate this directly to another optic in the system. So it could be laminated onto a, um, a, an existing lens, for example, um, that, that has, often has biaxial curvature if it's a fixed uh, spherical lens, for example. Yeah. Uh, so last time we did video, there was lots to do with the flexible e-ink devices, right? Yes. How's it going with that? Yeah, so we're, we're very much working on displays still, and we'll have more to announce on that in the coming in the coming months. All right, and here at the booth, you have even more stuff. Yeah, uh, we have. This is a uh, um, automotive smart roof demo that shows the uh, the same kind of tintable technology you've just seen uh, 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 on the um, for the AR, but really on a larger area and biaxially curved. So this, um, again, shows the 3D curving nature of the film. So even though it's made flat initially, you can then biaxially curve it to follow the complex contours that you have on the exteriors of, of vehicles and other surfaces. Do you fill the whole uh, flexible uh, product? you fill it with some kind of electrophoretic kind of liquid thing? This actually is a, um, a guest host liquid crystal cell. So it's a, it's a different kind of liquid crystal. Basically, inside here, there is a dye that's mixed in with the liquid crystal. And when you apply a voltage to the liquid crystal, it moves, it rotates, and that drags the dye around with it. And that changes how tra absorbing or transmissive uh, the film is, depending on the angle. Nice. Yeah. And there's one more demo there. Yeah, this is a, well, this is a, um, one second. So this is an organic LCD display um, prototype. So it's, excuse me. So it's, uh, so uh, the... it'll, it'll turn on in a moment, but it's basically a um, pixelated LCD display made on plastic. So it's wrapped around a radius of about 30 millimeters. Um, and in one moment, that'll t I'm just, I've just powered it up. So it, should, it will turn on in one moment. And you'll see that come into life. All right. It hasn't, yeah, hasn't quite, here we go, sorry. There we there go, it is. yeah, there it is. So that's actually an LCD display, and obviously normally LCDs are made on glass, but by building them on plastic, on tack film, they can be uh, curved to these kind of angles without affecting their um, uh, optical performance and the emission angle of the display, and that's a unique property of the kind of substrates we can use to make this kind of uh, technology. Is there a challenge in terms of reliability? to keep uh, flexible displays last as long as these? Uh... No, there's two parts to that. And I guess there's the transistors themselves, and they actually have um, the same or better performance in terms of all kind of important parameters, including reliability, as a more for silicon transistors. Um, and, the cell, and then there's the liquid crystal cell itself, and we've optimized that for, um, for having these curves uh, structures without affecting the cell gap, so that they can have uniform cell gap across a large area. Uh, but in theory also the flexibility should make them more durable because then they could be in theory drop proof yeah. and sometimes people lose their glasses and they sad if it's break yeah. right if it's more flexible stuff in there you're right There's, they are sort of you know as it were shatterproof i mean it's almost i almost think it, we've almost got so used to um, mobile devices breaking when we drop them and we almost think well that's sort of part and parcel of what we expect as a as a consumer we don't take it back and go it just broke we accept that but actually, you know, this, with this technology, you can get rid of those constraints and have it shatterproof. And save on weight? Save on weight and thickness. Is yeah. it better for the environment or not? Yeah, I mean, actually, it's a, it's a bioplastic that we're using. There's two, two points to that. It's a bioplastic substrate we're using, so it's better than using glass. 
Uh, also, the manufacturing temperature for organic electronics is much lower than for silicon transistors. Um, so it uses considerably less energy during manufacturing, so it saves a lot of, a lot of energy.